talk uh, is not about my primary uh, surgical activity, the tumoral orthopedic surgery, but about other complex surgeries in the orthopedic field, uh, using the silver coated megaprothesis in limb and salvage surgery. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask in Portuguese or in English. And so let's start. Okay, in, uh, there are extreme orthopedic situations that put uh, at uh, risk the viability of limbs. Uh, those are the, the case of the musculoskeletal tumors with great bone destruction, the trauma with severe bone loss with or without uh, infection, and the periprosthetic osteolysis with large bone substance loss with or without infection. Uh, in these situations, the amputations appear the offer the, as the end result. Uh, and this is the outcome we want to avoid. We did a seven years retro retrospective study between July 2014 to, to July 2021. And we found 36 cases of limb salvage surgery in prosthetic complications of the lower limb. And all the patients were treated in the same hospital by the same surgeon uh, with the same surgical team and using the silver coated endomega prothesis. Um, the patients uh, of our sample uh, uh, suffered from severe complications of primary or revisions, arthroplasty and knee, uh, the majority with um, the majority with infections and bone loss and complications of endomegaprothesis like infection, osteolysis, mechanical failure, and fractures. Just a moment, okay. Okay. We use, uh, we follow different um, approach on the treatment on tumors, uh, trauma, and uh, infection case. I will not discuss them here. Uh, due to our time constraints, but I want to uh, to say we follow, and this is important to follow, uh, always a uh, two-stage approach in the treatment of the infection cases. This is uh, the distribution uh, for the anatomical sites uh, about the megaprothesis, seven um, total femur prothesis, 11, uh, total prothesis of the knee with distal femur, proximal tibia, or both, and both means total knee, and total knee with distal femur and proximal tibia, three knee arthrodesic prothesis, three sacrolumic lumic acetabular prothesis, and 13 total hip prothesis with proximal femur endomega prothesis. About the characteristics, our group of 36 patients, 15, uh, men, 21 women, uh, with an average age of 48 years old, a an average of 22.3 centimeters of bone resected, and the, their base pathology range from infection to massive osteolysis, complex fracture with bone loss, and allograft uh, failure. We only have one case that demanded a second surgery for a reinfection. Our results are very encouraging so far. None of our patients showed any important manifestations of silver toxicity signs. We detected only two manifestations of cutaneous algeria in a proximal femur and in a proximal tibia and megaprothesis. Only one case of reinfection in 36 patients and regarding our functional results, uh, they were assessed uh, by the Musculoskeletal Tumor Society scale. And uh, the silver coated and omega prothesis are well tolerated by 29 of our patients, and only seven patients refer a satisfactory level of tolerability. In general, all our patients are satisfied with great and grateful to be able to keep their lower limbs with quality um, of life, uh, allowing them to do the basic things in daily, their daily lives, uh, like walk, uh, driving an adapted car, uh, and the basic activities. 
how our outcome and a good outcome with low rates of complications and good functional results uh, we think is due to a combination of, of uh, the factors like the surgical technique, the choice of the silver coated endomega prothesis, our treatment methodology, a careful reconstruction, and very important, the closure of the soft tissues. And it always uh, requires a very detailed and thorough planning of the surgeries as well as a very close follow-up of the patients if you, we aspire to a sex, successful uh, outcome. In conclusion, we can say with our experience uh, that a careful and a thorough uh, surgical technique with the use of the silicone and the megaprothesis are an effective surgical options in complex orthopedic clinical case with destruction or severe bone loss with or without infection, allowing the maintenance of a functional limb in situations where the amputation and even the articulation were before a solution. Now, the, I'm going to present you uh, several clinical cases from my practice where you can see everything we discussed before like the surgical planning, the surgical techniques, and finally the, the final outcome. We began with this one, a female, 48 years old, uh, a car accident at 23 years old, uh, with a left femoral neck fracture and a total arthroplasty. Several, three revision surgeries. And um, in the last one, in 2011, she got infected with a periprosthetic infection. Uh, she, when I saw her, uh, she has a shortening of the left lower limb of four centimeters. And she was submitted to several sur cleaning surgeries, trying to save the lower limb and the prosthesis. And uh, after a while, the, she, she get the proposal to be amputated, to be amputated by the head, articulated by the if she refused. And at that time I saw her and I proposed her to be submitted to a uh, two uh, stage uh, procedure to try to fight the, the infection, the periprosthetic infection. And currently five years, with five years of follow-up, uh, she has a negative C-reactive protein and she walks with the help of one crutch. This is the x-ray, the pre-op, uh, where we can see a long stem from the revision uh, and uh, the bone loss in the proximal femur. We can see here a cage, uh, similar Bursch Schneider cage uh, with signs of loosening. This is the aspect of the surgical field after the first surgery, when I, I perform a wide uh, debridement of all the devitalized soft tissues and the bone tissues, trying to get a blending surgical field to get there the defense of the body and the, the antibiotics used in the antibiotic therapy. That's the goal. And here we can see the acetabulum of the, the patient. And here, this is the osteolysis after the remove of the, the, the cage she had. This is the aspect of the spacer. I always, uh, um, uh, I do the, the spacer uh, the, during the surgery and I, and the spacer is only for that, is to get space to reconstruct in the second surgery. And in the second surgery, I, I remove the spacer uh, and, um, and then, I performed the reconstruction with the uh, approximal femur and omega prothesis, and I use a double, mo a double mobility constraint uh, acetabulum. Always perform the, the, the functional trials, uh, trials during the surgery, seeing the good function and the stability of the reconstruction. And this is the X-ray pause up with the the um, proximal femur and omega prothesis and the reconstruction of the acetabulum. I used the uh, almonds, uh, tantalium almonds, 
to reconstruct the acetabulum. And this is the patient uh, five years of follow-up walking with the help of one crutches and free of any signs of infection until now. Another case, uh, a female too, with 45 years old, uh, with a pass with a, an aromastic cyst of the right femur. This is the information I, I got from the, the, the clinical process of the, the patient. Um, she was submitted to a, a few revisions and in the revision to 2009 uh, with the Muller's ring, uh, she got an infection, a periprosthetic infection, and uh, after several surgeries, the same, she was proposed to, to be disarticulated by the hip. Uh, and this case has six years of follow-up, and this is the x-ray, the pre-op, with a long stem, uh, with a, a huge uh, bone destruction in the shaft and the proximal femur. Another x-ray, and this is the aspect in the first surgery um, with the active fissiles with pus. And uh, I do the same, remove all the uh, devitalized soft tissues and devitalized bone tissues and perform a spacer. And in a, a second approach, after the antibiotic therapy and the analytical controls with the C uh, protein reactive uh, borderline in these patients. I performed the reconstructions with the um, approximal femur and omega prothesis. And this is the patient walking at the three weeks after the second surgery. And she takes uh, antibiotics after the second surgery for a while too. And this is the patient three years after. Um, the second reconstruction, and like you see here, this is the cutaneous argyria in these patients, okay? And uh, now seven years, uh, six, six years after the, the limb salvage surgery, she's free from any signs of infection. This is the oldest one I have, um, a female 77 years old, uh, a plasmocytoma in 2008 and uh, it was one of my first ones and I performed her um, endomegaprothesis, a conventional uh, proximal femur endomegaprothesis, uh, no silver coated and um, after she got a breast cancer uh, in 2012 and uh, she got a um, an infection of the implant of fix for the breast cancer chemotherapy and she got an aseptic shock and, uh, and with that an infection a periprosthetic infection of the right hip and megaprothesis. Uh, in our hospital we have a department to fight the infection and uh, my colleagues here try to save the lower limb and the prothesis with several uh, ser uh, cleaning surgeries and uh, at the time they said that it's enough uh, and they proposed her to be amputated, to be desarticulated by the hip. Uh, that at that time they asked me if I have something to offer to the patient and uh, I proposed her for a two-stage approach again. This is uh, the, uh, the conventional endomegaprothesis at that time, the pre-op of, uh, of the first surgery. And I removed the, always the same, the methodic, all the same steps and perform the uh, spacer. And this is uh, the, the image from the second surgery uh, where I remove the, the spacer and uh, I remove the rest of the residual femur. There is no mechanical support and the quality of bone is very poor and uh, I remove everything and I, re I did perform the reconstruction with a total femur and omega prothesis, silver coated. And this is the functional trials during the surgery. And this is the x-ray after the, the, sec the second surgery, the reconstructed surgery. And this is the patient 
walking at the three weeks after the the surgery and here. Two months after the surgery. She this patient passed away two years ago because of her breast cancer. And at that time, three, three years after the second surgery, she was free from any signs of infection. And um, it was a, a very important case for me because one month and he, she will know she, she's gonna die and uh, she comes to me to say goodbye and to thanks me to keep her lower limb. And um, it was a moment, I tell. Okay, another thing, uh, uh, this is a youngest uh, woman um, with 22 years old at the time uh, I saw her. Um, she has a pass of um, uh, an osteosarcoma of the left uh, proximal tibia. And uh, at that time, uh, uh, they, were, uh, they were submitted uh, to a reconstruction with a, a proximal tibia and omega prothesis. Um, she, she got an, uh, a periprosthetic infection uh, in, in September of 2018 with uh, uh, active fistulas. And uh, at that time, uh, I proposed her to be treated in a two-stage um, approach. Uh, this is the pre, uh, the pre-op um, uh, X-ray. This is the aspect of the, the patient in the first surgery with the active fistula. I always remove the 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 fistula, of course, and perform the wide breathement of all the devitalized soft tissues like you see here all around the the endomega prothesis and uh, i remove the endomega prothesis and the devitalized bone i perform then a spacer and the spacer um uh enable to move the the, the knee after the, this first surgeon, the surgery. And this is important to keep the movement of the knee to have a, um, a extensor apparatus enough to work after the, the reconstruction, uh, after the second surgery. Uh, this is the X-ray of the spacer and this patient is able to walk uh, after this first uh, uh, surgery uh, to go to the bathroom and to go to do basic things uh, uh, in the hospital. And the second surgery I performed uh, trying to keep the extensor apparatus always and uh, I remove the spacer and I reconstruct with a total knee, a distal femur endomegaprothesis and the proximal tibia endomegaprothesis. And um, I reattached the extensor apparatus with the Trevira tube, Tereftala polyethylene, and um, reconstruct the, the extensor. This is the trials, the functional trials during the surgery, seeing the stability of the reconstruction. This, this is the, primi the primary fixation with the Trevira the, the tre tube. And um, this is the x-ray after the the reconstruction and this is the patient walking uh, four months after the second reconstruction now three years after the reconstruction she's free of any signs of infection and she's going married <laughs> um another another case of a proximal tibia a young man with 22 years old he has a problem with the uh, skin coverage, with exposure of the silver coated prothesis, and I submitted her, him uh, for a two stage uh, approach to treat the, the situation. I remove everything uh, the same. Uh, here, um, this is the, the removal of the trivial tube uh, he had, and it's not easy to remove the trivial tube. 
uh, with all the fiber optic tissue uh, in the tributary tube. The, that's the property who allows the tributary to do a second fixation uh, of the structures. And uh, I always use a uh, lavage, a pulsatile lavage with betadine and uh, peroxide, uh, hydrogen peroxide. And uh, this is the image from the second uh, from the, um, the spacer in the first surgery and the x-ray after the, the first surgery. And then I perform the, the second uh, surgery, the reconstruction with the removal of the spacer, always the same. A particularity in this patient, like you can see here, he hasn't um, no patellar tendon. And I reconstruct the patellar tendon using the Trevira tube. I reattached the turbine tube, all the turbine tube surrounding all the in the, the proximal tibia and omega prothesis, like you can see here. And um, I here in this surgery, I have the support of the the plastic surgery uh, using a free flap, a musculocutaneous free flap to cover uh, the end omega prothesis. I usually use, and it's me who perform that. I usually will use the medial gastrocnemius to cover the proximal tibia and omega prothesis. It's easy for, for us, for the orthopedic surgeons to do that. This is the x-ray after the second uh, surgery. And this is the patient uh, walking two months and a half after the second surgery. And uh, this case has three years and until now, no signs of infection. This is a trauma, um, a trauma situation, a uh, multifragment superintercondylian fracture of the left distal femur. And this patient has a special condition at the time uh, they come to uh, he come to, uh, came to me. Um, he had a supercondylar fracture uh, of the distal left femur at uh, 17 years old and he had a deformed femur, deformed bone. So uh, when he did this fracture, he stays in his hospital uh, for long and gets uh, an infection in the, in the fracture. And they propose him to be amputated by the tie. Uh, he refused and they asked my hospital if there, is, if there was some help to, to this patient and they sent the patient to me and I performed the same. I remove all the fracture fragments and uh, a wide abridgment and uh, a pulsatile lavage with the same, perform the spacer. This is the X-ray of the spacer. This patient uh, was able to walk uh, after the first uh, surg surgery to go to the bathroom too and to walk in the hospital. And I performed the second surgery after the antibiotic therapy and the analytical controls. The same, remove the, the spacer and uh, reconstruct with the uh, distal femur endomega prothesis, uh, silver coated. And um, this is the patient uh, three weeks after the surgery the second surgery. And this is the X-ray of the reconstruction. And this is the patient now. Um, he's able to walk without crutches. Uh, he has already some uh, li physical limitations um, because of uh, the accident at 17 years old, but uh, he recovered the um, the uh, the possibility and the, the, he's able to walk without any external support. Um, this is the, the biggest one I have. Uh, and this is a periprosthetic infection, a male with 65 years old with, um, uh, he, he got uh, uh, an hip heartoplasty of the right hip 
when he was 25 years old because maybe in the vascular necrosis of the femoral head, uh, he was submitted to a three revision surgery outside of our country. And in that surgery, they apply um, allograph, bone allograph uh, in to reconstruct the acetabulum. He did a uh, paper that femoral fracture uh, at 45 years old. And when um, uh, the colleagues did the osteosynthesis of this periprosthetic fracture, uh, he got a, a periprosthetic infection. Uh, a polymicrobial, uh, with polymicrobial cultures. Uh, and um, after several surgeries trying to save the lower limb, uh, he get the, the indication to be amputated, to be disarticulated by the hip. But here, um, a special attention for one thing. He had, at that time, bone holograph incorporated in the right acetabulum. If someone performed the uh, disarticulation by the hip, it's very hard to, to fight an infection with that bone inside the body. So it's, uh, it must, re it's, it's necessary uh, to have the idea to remove that, that bone. But um, the patient refused to be disarticulated. And um, when I saw uh, him, he has at that time set seven centimeters of shortening of the right limb. And I prepared this patient for a while uh, for the heart treatment. Um, I could uh, offer him and I proposed him for a two stage, the same uh, uh, treatment in two stage approach. And I propose him to be submitted to a right hemipelvectomy and the rim, the excision of the proximal two thirds of the femur. And then I will reconstruct him with a, um, a sacrolomic and a, a total femur uh, endomega prothesis. This is the x ray pre op of the first surgery. Uh, you can see here. Uh, the cage and the huge uh, amounts of destruction of bone and with the plate uh, just close to the knee. This is the aspect of the, the patient in the first surgery, the landmarks to perform the surgery. I removed the fistulas, the wide arrangement of all the soft tissues and the, the prosthetic material and the osteosynthesis material. This is the surgical field cleaned, uh, and this is the material removed. I performed the spacer, and uh, I, with, uh, with the German team of implant cast, I planned the, the reconstruction of the patient. Uh, this is the image, uh, the 3D image uh, of the CT scan with the spacer of the patients. And this is the, the reconstruction after several discussions uh, between me and the German team with the sacrolumic and uh, uh, total femur endomega prothesis. And uh, this is image from the second surgery where I remove the spacer and the residual uh, bone, the femoral bone uh, with the, I, I'm trying to show there the whole of the screws of the, the plate uh, um, I removed in the first surgery. This is the aspect of the surgical field after the sacrolumic and the plate in the tibia, and now with the lumic and the total femur endomega prothesis. This is uh, an image of the reconstruction, and this is the functional trials during the surgery, seeing the good function of the reconstruction, the stability. And this is the x-ray after the surgery. This is uh, image, 3D image of the CT scan of the, the, re, the endomega prothesis of the reconstruction with the custom made and the, the total femur. The topogram of the CT scan, uh, we can see here the shortening but already this shortening exists before the first surgery. 
And this is the patient walking two months after the second surgery. And uh, on the last case, I want to show you uh, only to see the, uh, the fibrotic uh, uh, growth, the, the growth of the fibrotic tissues in the terrier tube. This is a, a conventional endomegaprotesis, uh, no silver coated, and with a periprosthetic infection with several active fistulas. And this patient was proposed to, to be disarticulated by the hip too. And uh, I performed the, the wide bridgement. And here we can say this is the trabeter tube. Uh, it's like fibrotic tissues. And that's uh, the, the, what allows to uh, reinsert uh, the, the muscular tendon uh, structures and to work the, the stensor apparatus and the other uh, muscular tendinous structures. And this is an histological image from that tissue I removed with the microtubes of uh, the trevary tube that the, the polytonic trevthalat surround uh, with the fibrotic tissue. And uh, the same, I performed in this patient a spacer, I removed the spacer, and I reconstruct with a total femur and omega prothesis. And uh, this is the x-ray after the reconstruction. And this is the patient walking close the other one, the patient uh, submitted to the sacrolumic. And um, this is my presentation I have to, I have two more cases, but uh, it's, uh, my, I know my presentation is very big. This is my town, uh, Coimbra. I thank your, your attention to me and uh, this is my hospital and thank you thank you all